All right, let's have some fun. Uh, so today is part of optics, uh, dealing with spherical mirrors and lenses, uh, thin lenses specifically. Uh, we start with mirrors, and then we'll apply everything we learn with mirrors and apply it to lenses, which will be somewhat analogous. So we talked about reflection and refraction of light. We dealt with plane mirrors a little bit. We learned that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection with a plane mirror and stuff like that. We also learned that the light rays never really converge, that they appear to have come from a common point behind the mirror. We said that was a virtual image and that the distance to the image was equal to the distance to the object and stuff like that. So and we learned some things. So we didn't actually formally treat them mathematically or anything, but they would fall out true with the same equations we'll deal with spherical mirrors with today if we cared to. But it's much easier to make some general generalizations with the plane mirrors. Um, so I won't get into them again. I just wanted to bring up that the same equations that we're going to deal with with spherical mirrors apply as well. So when we deal with spherical mirrors, there's two types. So there's concave mirrors and there's convex mirrors. So the surface that you are looking at is the surface that it's named after. So in this case, we're going to look from the right here. This surface is going to be the mirror surface. So, and is that concave or convex? It's concave. I probably wrote it somewhere. No, I didn't, but it's concave. I like to think that you could crawl into a little cave right here. So but that's the concave surface. The other surface we're not looking at, that's not a mirror, is the convex surface. So always named at the one you're looking at. So this is our concave mirror. So, and in this case, we've got some points to define. So we have something called a focal point. It turns out your focal point is exactly equal to half the radius of curvature. So this would be like the center of a circle. If this mirror was one complete circle, this right here would be the exact center of the circle. So it's a radius away here in this case. And your focal distance is exactly half that. So, and if we look, that's the first equation you see here. Your focal distance is exactly half the radius of curvature. So your second one here is a little more nebulous. They call this the spherical mirror and thin lens equation. So one over P plus one over Q equals one over F, where F here's the focal distance. Sometimes you'll see it as one over DO plus one over DI equals one over F, which is personally my favorite, because then I don't have to remember what P and Q mean. So DO here is the distance to the object from the center of the mirror, the vertex of the mirror. So DI is the distance to the image from the center of that mirror. So here P just corresponds to the distance to the object and Q here corresponds to the distance to the image. You'll see both conventions used pretty commonly from textbook to textbook or online homework system to online homework system, things of a sort. So I'm gonna probably use P's and Q's much of the night, but it's totally analogous to DO's and DI's, same diff. So if we look at this, let's talk about what that focal distance actually means. If I had light rays coming from an object that was infinitely far away, infinitely far away, well, then DO here would be infinity. And what's one over infinity? Zero. And so this just kind of drops out. And we'd find out that one over the distance to the image equals one over the focal point, which means what? The distance to the image would be the same as the focal distance. So what we're saying is that the image would actually form at the focal point. So if I had these light rays coming infinitely far away, they would reflect back and converge right at that focal point. So that's kind of one way to kind of uh, reason out what a focal distance actually is. Infinitely far light rays all would converge and form an image there. But don't think of it as that light rays always form an image there. That's totally not true. Only ones coming from inf infinitely far away are object. Uh, okay, so but that focal distance ends up as part of this lovely equation. We will do a lot of plugging and chugging with this equation. So with mirrors and lenses, you know, we're going to use these in magnifying glasses for lenses. We use either lenses or mirrors in like telescopes and certain microscopes and stuff like this. Um, so wide applications. So in many cases, we'll talk about what's called a magnification here. So in this case, your magnification is just simply the height of the image over the height of the object. So, and that also, it turns out, is equal to the negative. We'll find out what that means later, but the negative of the ratio of the image distance over the object distance. So we'll see why that plays a role here. So let's say I had an overhead projector. So, or some sort of projector, and that'd be overheads, those are kind of old school, but projector sitting right here on the table. And I had it projecting up onto the whiteboard here. So, and it had a certain size image. And I looked at that, I'm like, wow, that's just too small. I need a bigger image. What would I do? I move it back. And so notice the distance to the object from the lens, well, the, the object's actually, you know, the slide being displayed inside the machine. That's not changing. But what is changing is that now it's a much further distance from the lens to the image when I move that projector back. And the further that distance to the image is, the greater the magnification I will get of that image. 
Cool? And so that's why you can kind of see, uh, reason this out, how that works. Now it turns out the positive or negative part of this, turns out when your magnification is negative, that means you have an upside down image, which we usually call an inverted image. And when your magnification is positive, it means you have an image that is upright, so right side up. Also, when you're, the absolute value of your magnification is bigger than one, it means your image is bigger than your original, original object. When the absolute value of your magnification is less than one, like a fraction, it means that your image is smaller than the original object. Cool?